Again, I'm Nick Shainans, and as your species today's topic, I would like to give a very brief introduction about the intelligent control and machine learning. I think that today I would just try to um, give a brief idea about so, the concept as well as what kind of in application machine learning can be used or the control theory can be used. And um, so, yep. So on this page, we have some um, work out right here. I just try to highlight uh, what kind of keywords we can find that in machine learning as well as in the control field. For example, uh, we have the buzz logic, we have the cosine system, machine uh, explanation, and uh, intelligent control, machine learning, deep learning, so and so. We can just uh, I do not exhaust all the keywords right here, but. Uh, most likely, you have found some keywords we have discussed today. Yeah. Okay. For example, the um, machine learning as well as the machine explanation. So, I'm going to start with some concepts. This concept, I hope that uh, you may not. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to admit you uh, feel bored about this because uh, some of them actually it is quite straightforward. But I would like to give. Um, that to you so that so we can understand what kind of application we can use this concept. Okay. So the first thing is that I will start with a human right here, a person. And then this person, um, because always when we do the control, actually we can do the manual control, a human control. For example, we can do anything, we can do driving, we can do whatever. Yeah. But how can we turn this into machine in adequate stability and other Okay. Now, just a simple example that every day we are going to do, for example, big jobs. And then so we put two pieces of bread into that. So how do we control? How do we make sure that uh, the toast is good enough? And then so if we do not have any feedback, for example, one thing we can do is that actually you can point the timer in the toaster. So what we are going to do is that I just set a timer, for example, one minute. 20 seconds and then so stop and then I'm going to look at the toast to see whether it is good enough or not. So this kind of thing, we call this is the open loop system. We are doing the open loop control, but the thing is that so again we do not know whether it is good or not. So we are going to do some learning. This kind of learning is that so we can do some experiment. We can do some experiments. We are going to try this many times and then finally I'm able to get the time on right here for the right time and then so so this is a kind of human learning and then this is very similar to the machine learning okay but the thing is that this is open up system and then so we it is good that so after we learn all these intelligence or learn all these rules it applies in the earth but if we are going to move to Another enrollment, for example, class. We have to learn everything again. Yeah. So this is open loop system and learning. And then now I'm going to talk about another concept that would be just the same person, the same guy. Maybe this is me, and so um, I'm going to do the same thing. Now this time I'm going to use my nose, my eyes to look at those toes to see whether the the smell is good enough or uh, the burning condition is good enough or not. So I'm going to fit this back to myself because I look at that, I smell that, and then I just know that whether it is good enough or not. So if the smell is good enough, I'm just going to press the stop button. And then this is the closed loop system. So we will just have look at the condition and then go back to myself. And then I'm going to determine whether I'm going to stop the toaster or not. So this is, so how do you, I know that when to stop, there are two ways to do it. But the thing that is, I'm going to, I'm going to have to buy more knowledge so that I know when to stop because I know what kind of smell it indicates it is a good toast or what kind of color it indicates it is a good, good toast. If it is not, I'm going to have a learning outcome. This learning outcome, that is, through this feedback loop, I'm going to have, say, a route to tell some experts to tell me that I'm going to do um, this routine and then I'm going to give that to expertise and then they tell us they, they tell me that whether this is a good toast or not and then 
through that process, I'm going to learn that. And that, so I will have to control policy to tell you when to stop the toaster. Yeah. So because we have the feedback, because we have the sensors right here. So most likely, it will be more robust. That means in different environments, it is possible to have more or less the same result. Yeah. Okay, so this is something about the closed loop system and learning. Yeah, so we combine them together. But up to now, it is still about the human learning. We just learned by ourselves. But how can we turn this into machine, machine intelligence? And then, so we exactly use the same framework. The only difference is that so we are going to replace the human by using a machine. This machine could be a computer, could be an algorithm. Um, so we, are, we have something right here to implement the rules or the policy. When to stop the toaster. We still need to have something that would be some actuator, actuator. That means that would be some mechanism to stop the toaster. Maybe we have a robotic finger to stop it, something like that. And then at the output, we have the sensors. These sensors, that could be a um, web camera or, or some um, whatever sensors, we are going to sense the right information that will be fed back to the machine to, to make decision. Yeah? So we call this is, um, the closed loop system, machine intelligence. And then on top of that, we have some learning algorithm which is going to learn this intelligence so that we develop intelligence to tell when to stop. Yeah. So this is the, the framework. Uh, now I'm going to expand this into um, expand it a little bit more. And then what kind of applications we can we can uh, use this framework. So I just uh, use the icon to represent that. Um, before I'm going to present some videos to you to demonstrate what kind of application we can have. For example, we talk about the self-driving, the driverless um, uh, autopilot uh, driving vehicle. So the same thing is that so we use the sensor, this sensor which is able to capture the location, the velocity, whatever thing, the obstacle in front of us. And then so we know this information, fit it back into the machine. The machine may be located in the vehicle or somewhere else, and then so this signal, the control signal will be transmitted to the vehicle to tell the steering angle, the velocity, so and so, whether there will be some uh, obstacle in front of us, and then we're going to stop or not, and then so you can see that this is a closed loop system. And so um, another example, there will be some uh, wind turbine system, and then so we can use exactly the same framework, that is the closed loop system right here. So, we are going to um, control the power generated. Yeah? The power generation, it depends on the wind. Yeah? The, wind if the wind is very strong, and then we do not want to damage uh, the wind turbine system. We are going to turn the bait into different angle so that the speed of the, of, of the wind turbine can be controlled according to the sensor's information. And then feed it back to the controller in order to determine what kind of of angle of the rate we are going to adjust so and so and then so on top of that so this machine intelligence or this machine actually it is not even can do the control it cannot do a lot of things for example fault detection that means when we are going to want the wind turbine system when the rate is turning and then so we can call out this signal these signals we can look at this waveform and then so we are going to determine look at this waveform and we determine whether there will be some something wrong pattern. If there will be something wrong pattern, we are going to send this signal to say the rescue team or the maintenance team to fix the wind turbine before it is fully damaged or um, um, it cannot be fun it cannot function. Yeah? So we have a lot of things, for example the robotic arm, control the drone for delivery of um, the warehouse system and then so whatever our system say so we have the uh, electric vehicle and then so we have a patch of battery we would like to manage the power consumption because all the battery um, the battery pack 
has a lot of battery inside, and then they have to work together. Otherwise, um, otherwise they will overheat. So we have to have a man management system to make sure that the battery work together in order to produce the, um, the required power consumption. Uh, I mean, the power generated. Uh, we can use the machine learning to take in and then so. Uh, surveillance system and then look at the gait or the posture of a human to determine whether this activity is uh, whatever to recognize the activity. Yeah, and um, the uh, drug administration or drug discovery. Yeah, so we can use something like uh, use the chemical to represent that as a graph and then to feed it into say um, machine learning. Algorithm to determine whether this um, whether this drug is I mean so can produce positive effect or negative yeah so that is something um, yeah we can use some machine learning to do that and uh, so music composition or even something like the COVID nineteen detection I'm going to talk about that later on so that means with this framework we can do a lot of things the coastal system plus the machine intelligence. Um, Plus the, uh, the learning outcome right here. So I'm going to summarize a little bit what I have just mentioned. The first thing is that um, we have some learning outcome right here to tell the machine how to learn. And then so we can have a lot of algorithms, just like a few, say, back propagation algorithm, reinforcement learning, or some uh, metric heuristic search algorithm, for example. Genetic algorithm or active small optimization. Yeah. And so uh, that would be a learning agent. This learning agent, that is, you can regard it as a mathematical function, but some mathematical function will have better expression capability. So it demonstrates better learning capability. For example, we can use first logic system or the structure network or legal person network, so and so. So in the middle, we will have the applications. In between, we have the actuators as well as the sensors. And that we're going to close the feedback, feedback loop, or we can open the feedback loop. It depends on what kind of application we are going to do. Yeah. So um, now, what I'm going to do is that uh, just to explore a little bit uh, about some control application, and uh, so so you will know what or we can do. Uh, using this kind of framework or mechanism. This is something um, my team has done that is um, using some machine learning for modeling as well as control for the patient general um, and the We have done that in the Keynes Medical School many years ago. I cannot remember how many years ago. But anyway, the idea is that uh, we have a patient right here. We would like to inject drugs into this patient in order to put this patient into sleep and then so so we have some setup right here we we haven't done the clinical trial but this one that is um we have a simulator there and then compare with the real patient and the response of the real patient to see whether it works or not yeah so in this figure we have the equipment right here. They're going to collect the data as well as the most important thing that is about this this that is the um, uh, bisexual index, which is an index to measure how deep the patient is sleeping. Okay, so we would like to control the index in the value about 50 so that so this is the general and the busier. We would like to achieve the idea is that. We're going to have the learning algorithm to learn to control policy. This learning control policy will tell us what kind, what con concentration of the drug will be injected into the patient. We're going to control concentration of two drugs. The first one, that is the powerful, and the other one, that is the uh, when we when we you, and then so. So we can just simply inject that into this patient and then control this value to around 50. Um, Okay, so I'm going to zoom into this figure. Yeah, so this figure, that is something we have done. And then, so you can see that so the green line right here, that is, we have a pen of the green line. In this green line, we would like to control the weeks into that 
region. So we start with 100. This is the y-axis, that is to this value. 100, it means that the patient is fully awake. Okay. So we start from the fully awake, and then so controlled by injecting the drug into the patient, and then we are going to put the patient into sleep around 50, and then so going into the deep sleeping status, and then control it back to 50. So, so we are doing the tracking control. That means we would like to we would like to control the blue line to follow the green line. Yeah. So that means you can see that. So right here, we are able, we are not able to 100% track the green line, it is because there will be some delay between the patient as well as the absorption of the drug. Okay, so in the lower figure, that is about the concentration of the drugs I just mentioned, yeah, the two drugs. So anyway, um, in this study, we compare that with the traditional control theory as well as the machine learning control theory, and then we demonstrate that some advantage given by machine learning also. And um, so another one that is something about uh, obstacle avoidance and control. This kind of research that is something very similar to the autopilot vehicle. For example, now we have a vehicle right here or mobile robot in this box, and then so other three robots, and then so they act as static obstacle, and then so we try to develop some control mechanism right here so that the robot is able to identify the obstacle as well as to plan the path going from point A to the red point that is the destination. Yeah? So how do we do this? It is because uh, we are having a camera on top of that using the image processing technique to identify which robot is what. It is which, yeah, according to the color code. Yeah. So this is something like look at the color, look at the robot, and then look at the color, and then to see which robot is which. And then based on the center of this robot, we identify the location, that is the coordinates, as well as based on the movement of the coordinates, we are able to find the hacking angle, finding the velocity, so and so. That kind of information that is, will be used by the machine to make a decision to tell which direction this robot is going to move. Yeah, so that is something like we are driving and uh, so we just look, look at the road condition and then determine which direction we are going to move to. Okay. And uh, we have take this a step forward, that is, to work as a team. And then so uh, that is a robot soccer experiment and then so we have six robots right here that means two teams one side we have three robots another side we have another three robots and then we combine the machine intelligence as well as the control theory to control the movement of the robot and then to make decision of the robot so that they are playing as a team in order to get the score yeah so you can see that uh, one team has better intelligence because we Say the first logic. Another one, we just use some naive control theory, and then so, so you can see the difference about that. Yeah. And so uh, this is about the robot soccer. Still, we still use the same framework, that is the coastal system with the machine intelligence and learning algorithm right there. Yeah. So, so this is the robot soccer, and uh, we're going to talk about. Um, Another simple project from an MSc student, that is the in, uh, pendulum balancing. That is, we have a robot right here, and then this robot, it is a benchmark system, and so uh, it is something related to the biomechanics of human, because when we are walking, actually, we are an inverted pendulum. So if we are able to balance that kind of robot, that means we are able to balance, say, a bipedal robot, something like that. So, we are going to measure the angle yeah, between the robot and um, some reference, so that so we know the, the we, we know the angle of the robot and velocity of the swing, so that so using these sensors and fit this back to um, the machine and then to generate.
the control system that is about to build when, which direction and what velocity we are going to move to. Yeah. So the next one that would be yeah. So that is another type of inverted pendulum, and then so we call this is T-shaped inverted pendulum. And so uh, the idea is more or less the same, and then so. So this joint is a passive joint. It means that we do not apply any control or apply any force right here. Yeah. So in order to balance the inverted pendulum, we are going to use this sliding bar. That means right here we have a motor, and then the motor will generate the signal to this sliding bar to the left, to the right, in order to balance the rope up in order to balance the inward angle. So we can see that. So when someone had the pole and then finally we are able to return to the origin. Yeah, so we call this as the origin. Actually, you can set the origin to a different angle. Yeah. Okay. So the next one that is about uh, an EU project some years ago. Um, we are talking about the wind turbine system, but uh, in this project, we focus on the bow tightening. Yeah, so that means when we open, when we open this hub, when we open this hub, we will point out that so we have 128 bolts and nuts. And that, so we would like to tighten that because in the industry, we still use it. We still use um, uh, the human to do the tightening, and that so we will like to make it effective as well as automatic. So we have done some experiments um, in our lab and then so we marked the tightening tubes. And so into this yellow robot. So we have some learning outcome as well as the using the physiology in order to tighten the bolt. Something like this. Yeah, so this is the Lab set up. We pick up the bolt. Oh, yeah, pick up the nut and then tighten it. We are going to control the angle as well as to talk the force, so that each time we are able to have the constant talk and constant angle, so that so uh, they make this very faster in the hub. So that otherwise, if the force is not constant, when it rotates. It will cause some damage. Yeah. So we still use the coastal system right here. And then so another experiment that is this one. We in our lab we use the 3D printing and then 3D print this manipul uh, manipulator. And then so this is the tangent driven one. Tangent driven it means that you can imagine that in my hand. In my arm, we have some muscle, and then tendon. We are going to have three wires in order to just tighten it or we relax it, and then we can control the end point of the arm. Yeah. So we have some wires right there, and then we would like to control this form. So this experiment is very challenging. It is because that it is very uncertain. We just feed in each part of that. That means. Each painting, it, it is not very accurate. And then also the, the tendon driven. Uh, if you're talking about model, it is highly nonlinear. And then so if you're going to design a linear system to that, actually uh, it works, but so uh, it is not as good as using a linear controller. So this is what we have done and then so so you can see that the moving distance is very short, but when we compare that with the traditional robotic solution, that our method is still better than so the existing one. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, because for this one, there will be a lot of application. For example, in the surgery, we are going to have the endoscopic, and then so we are going to control the end factor to move the the end point to certain axis inside the body. Yeah. So I just talk about um, some control theory, some control application, and then so I would like to talk a little bit more about 
once we have the machine intelligence, and then how do we interpret it? Because uh, you can just see that in the application, it works, it works. If it doesn't work, why? And then so, why we come up with this control policy? How can we understand something behind this control theory or the machine intelligence? Yeah, so that is something we have touched on um, um, today. So just one slide and then so now talking about driving and then so we would like to drive a car and keep a safe distance. So for example, this is the blue car is um, driving and then so I would like to keep a safe distance. But the thing is that what is the safe distance? We don't know. Yeah, so that means different countries, different so different places will have different groups. Yeah, so that means it is something very weird. But the thing is that if someone told me that I'm going to drive in a safe distance, in my mind, I come up with some rules. So these rules, that is something like that. So if the distance is small, for example, this distance is small, and then so I'm going to keep the speed to be low, or I do not accelerate that, or I'm going to de decelerate. And then what about if the distance is medium, for example, in this position, and then I should control the speed to be medium speed, and then the next one that would be the distance is large. Like this case, I'm going to increase the speed. The speed is high. So that is something in our mind. But the same thing is, how do we understand that? Linguistically, we understand what it means, but what does it mean by small? Because when we talk about small, whether this room is small or we are talking about uh, the distance is small, we use small to describe a lot of things. So anyway, later on, we have to define what small, what low. Actually, this language term we have defined. But in general picture, we understand what it means. Yeah, these three rules combined together, which give us some ideas how to how to drive a car and keep a safe distance. So in this case, if we are able to have a machine learning algorithm automatically develop these rules, and then we can explain the machine intelligence. So we know what the machine is doing. Yeah. Okay. So this is one thing. Another thing that is, if humans, we can provide this group to the machine, that means we are able to teach machine what to do. For example, this morning we talked about uh, to determine whether the chemical is toxic or not. If we are able to come up with some groups, and then so if this chemical or this compound has this kind of features, and then most likely, the final product will be toxic, or the risk level is maybe low, high, or something. So in that case, that means at least we could be able to incorporate our knowledge into the machine intelligence, and then so in return, this machine intelligence can be explained to us. We understand what the machine is doing. Yeah, so that's why we can use the buzz logic to do, the, to do this. So that means in this case, this is the model-based explanation. And then so there will be something like model-free explanation. We call that model agnostic um, approach. So that means when we have um, deep learning, it is an optic model okay, box. We cannot explain that, but we have some algorithm or some mechanism to explain that. For example, using the line, using the software value, we can have a snapshot of the input to explain why the output, why the machine make that kind of decision, something like that. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, the first logic that is, we are able to develop some groups, these groups that is human can understand. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to talk about some biomedical applications. So classification of the COVID-19, our team has done something about that uh, in the past two years. Now you can see that. So I'm going to turn the closed loop system into an open loop system. This open loop system that is we have input and then feed it back in a uh, feedback feed it to the machine, and then the machine is going to generate the output. And so the input 
in multitude as by whether it's COVID-19 or not. Okay, we use input images, for example, X-ray image or the uh, the CT scan or something like that. So, so in in this paper, and we use these two kinds of images. So, model right here. We use a bunch of models. For example, some existing models. I'm not going to read that out. And then, so, for example, all of them get CNN model convolution of new network or deep learning model. And um, we make some modification and uh, so this model is able to classify five five causes. For example, COVID, um, pneumonia, um, normal or um, tuberculosis, something like that. So that means um, if you're going to increase the number of causes and then you will train the model and uh, so that can be done. The next one, um, another paper doing the same thing that is about classification of COVID. Yeah? So we use the MA, we call this the MA lab. The MA lab that is, we use the attention mechanism. Attention mechanism, which is some kind of at least in, um, 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 in the machine learning. So the idea is that, so because in the previous slide, when we do the classification, we just take the whole image, just like um, we present me the whole image, and then so based on this whole image, we are, I'm going to determine whether this is COVID or not. But the thing is that if we think about um, what the human is doing when we look at the X-ray image, actually we are going to focus some features. These features, for example, because the COVID, which will the features coming from the lung section. So we are going to have some mechanism, the attention mechanism that is to figure that out amongst, that is the lung, and then so cover this mask into the image and extract the lung only and then fit it into the deep learning model so that which is going to determine the results, whether it is COVID or not, yeah, or other causes. And um, some other transportation application. So this one that is, um, we capture the EMG signal, the EMG signal that is some signal from the muscle. We are going to say, um, um, we would like to control prospectives. And then so moving this muscle using some sensors right here. And then so this muscle, the contraction of the muscle, will give you different kind of signal. This kind of signal, we fit it into the CNN model or whatever model, and then so we can tell you that what kind of gesture this person is going to make or making, and then so, so that we are able to control the prospective or whatever machine, yeah, because if you're doing the remote control, and then so we can still use this kind of data to do it. So, another one, we have a robot. When we look at this point, this is the this is the propulsion probe that is something like a finger. And then, so in the surgery, we would like to we would like to determine whether there would be some heart inclusion, say a tumor. And then we're going to slide our finger. The surgeon is going to slide finger into soft tissue, and then to feel whether there would be something down below. And then, so, so this is something you use a robot to do the human job. Yeah. And then, so, say, so we use the LSTN of the long short term memory. And then, so this is a kind of machine learning technique. Yeah. So this is the finger slide along the tissue, and then, so we collect some signal, fit this signal into the LSTM to capture the spatial as well as temporal information and to determine the depth or the size of this heart inclusion, that is the tumor, for example. Yeah, so this is the paper, and um, another one that would be um, yeah, the data set from the King's Medical School as well, detection of non-erupsive reflux disease. Yeah, so that is something like we have some stomach acid, which is we fact to our um, uh, as a focus so that so it caused some damage right here and so what we are going to do is that to insert the camera 
And then, so to look at, to look inside, and then you would find out that there would be some image right here. And in order to capture better the features, we're using some techniques to mask out some non relevant information. So throughout this process, finally, we identify this feature. And then, so we are going to create some small patches. That is, we are going to look at region by region, one by one. So if you're going to slide the window from the left to the right, from the top to the bottom, you're able to come up with this small image address. And uh, so fit it into the model. And then the model will just tell you that this small patch, whether it is learned or not. Yeah. So that is healthy or unhealthy. And uh, so, so after a sequence of this small patches, and then we can after majority voting, that means this is positive, this is negative. If more positive than negative, and then we can tell that this is a positive, otherwise it is negative. And so something like rotate. So this is the application using the machine learning. And so we have some learning algorithm and then to tell what parameters we are going to use in the CNN. And the next one, some industrial applications as well. So this one is something very similar to um, to the hard inclusion detection. In the lab, we have the tactile sensor. The tactile sensor, that is, we have a finger which runs along the surface and then to feel the texture of this surface. And so uh, this one will just tell you that what kind of material it is. For example, if we would like to have a robot, the robot is going to grab something because when we grab something, if it is a hard, hard wood, and then so we are going to use some, um, say, a ball force to grab it. If we are going to grab an egg, and then so, of course, we cannot just squeeze on that, right? So that means by identifying the texture, we are able to control the force of the robot arm, and then so to control the friction, so that we are able to grab the same. Yeah, so these are the two papers, and um, the next one, this is about the ball bonding inspection. So, the, so to explain this factor, that means when we are going to open our computer, our laptop, and then you will find something right there. That means we have an integrated circuit, we are going to use the solder to solder to uh, solder all these integrated circuit into the circuit board and then so but if the soldering is I mean um, the soldering condition is good or bad it will determine whether this computer works fine or not. So we are going to have an algorithm using the image take a picture or we are going to have a camera slide along this circuit board and then identify the bond location and then check whether this bonding condition is good or not. And so we have some mechanism or machine learning model in the chain fitted into the machine and then just to tell you that the condition of the bonding. And this is one application. And so this is the paper as well. So finally, the conclusion. Yeah? So this conclusion is just like this. So today I talk about um, this framework. This framework it contains a learning algorithm. So we have a learning algorithm to teach machine what to learn according to the application. And then so we have some sensors, we have some actuator in between in order to in order to um, control the application in the middle. We have the learning model. This learning model is going to is a learning agent which is going to learn to control policy or the machine intelligence in order to get the thing done. So that means in the video, we turn this into a fill in the bank exercise. That means if you are able to fill in something in the middle in this in, in this box, if we can formulate that formulate that as a closed loop system and then so we will have this framework to get the thing done. And so this is a closed loop feedback system, or we are going to turn this into an open loop system. For example, we fit an image right here. 
and then so fit it into the model, and then the model will tell us whether what kind of input, what, sorry, what kind of class it is. So we're going to fit in chemical bracket, and then the model will tell you that whether it is toxic or not. Or we are going to fit in some chemical right here. Ask this model to create some new chemical, and then this new chemical could satisfy some condition. So if we would like to generate some new chemical or new compounds, they are non toxic, and then we can just use the learning algorithm to teach the learning model to do that. Okay? So, yeah, so this is uh, what. Um, I, I talked today, yeah, so maybe this is the conclusion. Thank you very much for listening.